God is good, amen? Amen. amen. I pray that you came for a full meal deal today, Lord. He's going to have it for us. He's got some special things. I think people are going to leave here different than what they came in this morning, amen? amen. I want to start off, first of all, and let you know that uh, Brother Josh and Brother Richard are not here this morning because they have COVID. And I thank God for Faye and the praise and worship team for filling in. I thank amen. God for my grandson, uh, Justin, running the sound system for us. And we're just going to keep on keeping on. Amen. Amen. Pastor Joy, she injured herself somehow or another this week, and she's been hobbling along all, all week long. I think she pulled a, a muscle or tendon in her leg, and she's not been able to walk around good. And uh, she called the uh, ER yesterday, and they said they were so crowded they couldn't get her in. So I got up this morning. I was going to be real quiet, and I was going to wake her up. I was going to try to get dressed and get out of there. So I tiptoed around the house real quiet, went outside to get my truck, and her car was gone. I've been doing this. I went back in the house. She was gone. She got up this morning and drove herself to urgent care. So I'm waiting on her to call me and let me know what's going on. Y'all just keep that in prayer, okay? Amen. God is still on the throne. We, like you said, I thank God this morning for our freedom. Thank God for our, our spiritual freedom and also for our earthly freedom to be able to come to the house of God and worship as you see fit this morning. Amen. Amen. Also, want to give a shout out to those who join us on Facebook and YouTube. We appreciate you. Being with us this morning, appreciate your prayers and your support. Also, want to shout out to Janelle. She's been in the hospital this week, and, and God's turning that situation around, and she's going to be able to come home pretty soon. So we're thanking God for that. Amen. 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 Also, Dean and, and uh, Fred and, and San Antonio, they're, they're faithful to, to watch us, support us. We'll say a big shout out to y'all and Montgomery. The kids, Montgomery's mom is sick, so let's keep her in prayer also. Okay. Amen. All right. Let's hold our Bible maker confession. Say it like you mean it, mean it like you say it. This is the word of God. This is the word of God. I have what it says I have. I have what it says I have. And I can be what it says I can be. I can be what it says I can be. And I can do what it says I can do. I can do what it says I can do. My mind is alert. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. My heart is receptive. I'm a winner. I'm a winner. I'm a winner. I'm a doer. I'm a doer. Not just a hearer. That I'm a doer. I'm a doer. Not just a hearer. In Jesus' name. Jesus. Oh, Thank God. The Bible says we're all part of the body of Christ. So turn to somebody for me behind you. Next you say, Thank God. You brought the rest of my body this morning. Thank God. Now tell somebody God loves you and so do I. God loves you and so do I. Church, I want to start out with a, a prayer this morning. Sister Charlene gave this to me, and I thought it was so awesome for the service we're having today. This is a prayer for America. It says, Dear Lord of our hearts and our nation, I call out to you today. You're the only God of our salvation. Please have mercy on this USA. We're supposed to be a people of faith. We're supposed to be a people of high hopes. Please open people's hearts to your truth. Save their souls and fill them with the Holy Ghost. Thank you for the freedoms you give, even the freedom to make a choice. But you know some choices are against your love, and we lift up this prayer to you with our voice. You have been, you have seen nations rise and fall. You know every government, every king, every president, every person. You're the God who knows everything. You've heard all the prayers that I have been praying, that have been prayed. You have seen all the things that have been done. We call out to you, interceding for our nation, in the name of Jesus, your perfect and risen Son. Let your will be done in the White House, where laws and rules are made. Let your will be done in the schools and churches, where people are supposed to be saved. We pray for the homes where families dwell. We pray for the media to agree more with you and not the influence of hell. Cleanse our nation of perverseness and what would tear, tear our families apart. Please cleanse us of all evil and darkness that try to creep into our hearts. I pray that the love of God and the power of his spirit keep over this precious land of ours. You're the one, Lord, that gave it to us. Please keep your hand on it with your amazing grace and power. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Church this morning, if you turn me to Exodus chapter 1, Exodus chapter 1, we'll begin at uh, verse 5. And as you turn there, the Bible says, Mary Hart goes good like medicine, so I got you some medicine this morning. All right. Lord, 
boy come and said, Dad, I bought a brand new business. What? Those cars are worth $200,000. You don't have a dollar. Yeah, I look at it parked there. It cost me $50. The father looks out the window and sees a brand new business. Son, what have you done? You stole it. The father grabs the boy by the ear and takes him in the house where he said he bought it. A big house where an older lady is having a cup of tea in her garden. Excuse me, ma'am, says the father. Is that true that you sold this car to my son for $50? Yes, indeed, she says. But that can't be true. This car is worth more than $50. My husband went on a work trip to Switzerland a month ago. But it turns out he was cheating on me with his secretary. And he would stay there and never going to return. Okay. He took everything but this car, the Bentley. And yesterday he called me saying that his secretary had stolen everything and that he had run out of money. He wanted to sell the car urgently and send him the money. That's what I did. Oh, Bob was in trouble. He forgot his wedding anniversary. His wife was really angry. She told him, tomorrow morning I expect to find a gift in the driveway that goes from zero to 206 seconds and it better be there. Next morning, he got up early and left for work. When his wife woke up, she looked out the window. Sure enough, there was a gift box wrapped in the middle of the driveway. Confused, the wife put on her robe and ran out to the driveway. She brought the box back in the house. She opened it and found a brand new bathroom scale. Uh -oh. Bob has been missing since Friday. <laughs> <laughs> Last one. A farmer and his brand new bride were riding home from the chapel in a wagon pulled by a team of horses. When the older horse stumbled, the farmer said, that's one. A little further along, a poor old horse stumbled again. The farmer said, that's twice. After a little while, the poor old horse stumbled again. The farmer didn't say anything, but reached under the seat, pulled out a shotgun, and shot the horse. His brand new bride raised all kinds of heck with him. So that was an awful thing to do. The farmer said, that's one. <laughs> <laughs> Church, before I get to our scripture this morning, I want to remind you of something. In Proverbs 4, verse 20. It says, My son, tell somebody God's talking to you. My son, attend to my words. In other words, pay attention to what God. Listen, the Bible says his words are spirit and life. Amen. These words can change your whole life if we allow them to do so. It's important to listen to what, not what I'm saying, listen to what the Spirit is saying. Amen? He said, incline, attend to my words, incline thy ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thy eyes. Keep them before you. Keep them in the midst of your heart. Don't you listen to this? For they are life. Say life. life. They are life unto those that find them and health to all their flesh. If you need health and you need more life, is you're going to find it in the Word of God. Amen. Listen, we don't just come and go through the motions and just read the simple. Listen, this is the living Word of Almighty God, and we need to treat it that way. Amen? Amen. Praise God. All right, I got that established. Let's go to Exodus chapter 5. I mean, chapter 1, verse 5. It says, So the total number who went with him was 70, for Joseph was already there. In due season, Joseph, each of his brothers, died in that generation. Meanwhile, their descendants were very fertile, increasing rapidly in number. There was a veritable population explosion, so that they soon became a large nation, and they filled the land of Goshen. Then eventually, a new king came to the throne of Egypt, who felt no obligation to the descendants of Joseph. He told his people, these Israelis are becoming dangerous to us because there's so many of them. Let's figure out a way to put an end to this. If we don't, and war breaks out, they'll join our enemies and fight against us and escape out of the country. So the Egyptians made slaves of them and put brutal taskmasters over them to wear them down under a heavy burden while building the store cities, Pithom and Ramesses. But the more the Egyptians mistreated and oppressed them, the more the Israelis seemed to multiply. I want you to remember that. The more the world tries to distress us, to put us down, the more we should grow and flourish and, and become more abundant. Amen? Amen. And he right. said, the Egyptians became alarmed and made this Hebrew slavery more bitter still, forcing them to toil long and hard in the fields and carry heavy loads of mortar and bricks. I want to talk about freedom today because we are celebrating the 4th of July this weekend. But I want to talk about a different kind of freedom. I want to talk about a freedom from bondage this morning. Amen? 
Amen. Amen. Listen, many of God's people, though they're, they're saved, they're still in captivity to one or more areas in their lives today. And it's time for liberation, church. It's time for us to break loose from every bondage. Today, somebody is going to get a hold of the Word of God, and you're going to come out of whatever bondage you've been in. Amen. 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 Tell somebody, I'm getting free today. I'm getting, I'm getting free, free today. Listen, because the king of Egypt was afraid of the children of Israel, he brought them into a bondage. How many realize the devil's afraid of you? How many realize he does not have power or authority over you? As God's word says he's already translated out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. He doesn't have any authority except what we give to him, church. That's why he wants to intimidate you. He wants to put you in bondage. He wants to put you in fear. He said, and the people who uh, he wanted to abolish these people who enjoyed freedom, they enjoyed liberty, and now they're slaves. Not only were they made slaves, but they, the king put these taskmasters over them to oppress them, to push them down, to beat them, to demoralize them, and make their lives miserable. They made their lives bitter with hard bondage. And whatever area they were working in, the taskmasters drove them with whips and hard punishments. The children of Israel cried out to God by reason of the bondage. And their cry came up to God, and God sent a deliverer named Moses. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people working in Egypt, and I have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrow. And I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians, and to bring them up out of that land into a good land, a large land that flowed with milk and honey. Come now, therefore, and I will send thee into Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my children of Israel out of Egypt. God said, I came down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptian. How many realize that Jesus came to deliver us from the bondage of this yes. world? Yes. See, the Egyptians symbolize or represent the world system. And God said, I sent Jesus Christ down here to deliver you out of the hands of the bondage that you've been to through the Bring world it. system. Come on, somebody hey, give God some praise. Yeah. And not only did he come to bring you out, he took came to bring you in. He said, I've taken you out of this, but I'm going to bring you into an abundant life. How many realize that Jesus said, I came that you might have an abundant yeah. life? Amen. 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 God wants us to have so much more than what we settle for. And sometimes we get upset with God. We get mad at God. Robin was talking about a while ago about how the devil, how God rebuked the, the devil for the, being a devourer, trying to devour our property, trying to devour our fruit. Listen, God does rebuke the devourer when you pay your tithes and your offering. God does his part. That does not mean that you can't turn around and open a door and let him back into your life. And if you let him back into your life, what's the devil going to do? He's going to kill, he's going to steal, and he's going to destroy. Amen? Amen. 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 Come on, give God some prayer. Now, we all know the story how God, by the hand of Moses, brought the plague after plague upon Egypt till finally Pharaoh wanted to get rid of them. I mean, he pushed them out. He threw them out. He evicted them. Well, I want you to know, I'm here this morning, and some of you have been in bondage to captivity and slavery and oppression <laughs> of the enemy, and I want you to know that today, if you can believe the word of God, God wants to bring you out of that bondage. Absolutely. God wants to set you free this morning. Amen? Amen. Amen. The Bible says, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Listen, it's as you, so many times we want the goosebumps, we want the feel good, and that's all great. But if you remember, we've been teaching on Wednesday night. He says it's through the knowledge of God that we become, we, that we have all things that pertain to life and to godliness. Amen? And he says it's through the precious promises that we have that we become partakers of the nature of Christ. So if you don't have the knowledge of the promises, how are you going to have faith for it? Come on, Come on Amen? Come on. You need to know what belongs to you so when the devil lies to you, you stand and say, oh, no. That's not the truth. I know the truth. I know what belongs to you. I know who I am. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Psalms 124, 7 says, Our soul is escaped as a bird out of the snare of the fowler. The snare is broken and we are escaped. The Lord said to tell you this morning that your days of bondage, slavery, captivity, and oppression are coming to an end. 
You are going to come out if you can believe God this morning. Do I have any believers in here this morning? Amen. Amen. All right. Listen, there's all kinds of bondage, all kinds of captivity. Of course, sin is the greatest bondage. Amen? Amen. The sickness and disease is a captivity. Poverty and lack of bondages, depression, fear, anxiety, stress, even grief can become a bondage and a captivity. It's normal to grieve when you lose somebody or something that's precious to you. But don't let it go and let God, don't, if you don't let it go and let God fill it with something good and let God heal it, it can still become a waste and eventually bring you into captivity. Amen? Amen. Listen, religion and tradition can be a bondage. There are a lot of religious people, and they're bondage to a bunch of rules and regulations. They're still trying to live according to the rules and regulations, which we all know we can't do. And it burns people out, and people get discouraged and give up. Listen, it's not about religion. It's about relationship. Yes. Yes. He don't want your religion. He wants your relationship. Yes. He wants your heart. He wants you. Come on, I'm preaching better than y'all praise yeah. There are so many of people, God's people who are being held in captivity by guilt and shame and regret. It doesn't matter who you are or where you've been or what you've done or what's been done to you. God doesn't hold it against you. We were talking about this this morning. So many of us, we're carrying stuff that Jesus is carrying for us. He carried our guilt. He carried our shame. He carried our sin. Why do we want to carry it if Jesus is willing to carry it? Amen? If Jesus set us free, if Jesus forgave us, why can't we forgive ourselves? Amen? Amen. Amen. The Bible says that we are a new creation in Him. And God has anointed me to tell you, you are forgiven, you are free, you're free from the past, you're free from the pain, you're free from the guilt and the shame. Jesus took it all on himself so that you and I could be free. Somebody needs to get all of that. The devil has been beating you up, making you feel guilty and condemned to shame. And God says, you don't have to feel that way no more. Jesus carried it for you. You're free today. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Listen, there are a lot of people who are bound by habits, by addiction, by lust of the flesh. And there are mental bondage, emotional bondage, and spiritual bondage. And I know I'm talking to some people who have been in captivity. Some people who have been under oppression of the enemy. Your life is not full of joy and peace. You're not experiencing the abundant life that Jesus came to give. You're living a limited, a restricted, discouraged life. It seems that everything you do is done with difficulty and with great effort. And it seems that for the great amount of effort that you put in, you get very little accomplished. This is the work of the devil to hold you back, to press you down, to keep you from becoming the chosen, anointed, appointed, Amen. empowered, free, Amen. happy man or woman yes. that God has ordained you to be. Yes. Amen? Amen. Yes. Amen. Yes. I know many of you would never think of turning your back on God. You love God, but your life is not experiencing the joy and the power that God has ordained for your life to be, church. That's why that scripture in 1 Peter, write that scripture down. We learn, we, we go through it every Wednesday night. 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 2 through 4. You've got to have the knowledge, church. You've got to understand. So many people were waiting, well, if God wants me to have it, he'll give it to me. It's not the way it works. He said you have not because you ask not. And you can't ask for something if you don't have the knowledge of what God says about it. That's why it's important. He said, don't just come to church and take some preacher's word for it. You hear me say that all the time. Right. Don't just take my word for it. You go check it out for yeah. yourself. Amen. You go read that word for yourself. Let the Holy Spirit show you, reveal to you what God wants to reveal to you. Amen? Amen. Amen. When the devil knows he can't cause you to turn your back on God, he's going to do the next best thing. He's going to bring you into a bondage. He's going to bind you up. He's going to oppress you. King Nebuchadnezzar knew he could not turn the hearts of the three Hebrew children again away from God. So what did he do? He bound them. And many of God's people, and some of you that are listening to me, you love God, but the devil has you bound. He's entangled you. He's limited you. He's restricted you. He's oppressed you. He's got you all tied up. It's not that you quit on God, but somewhere along the way, you lost that freedom. You lost that liberty. You're moving, but it's just like trying to run with your shoelaces tied together. Amen? It's like trying to walk in quicksand. You don't have that zeal. You don't have that joy. You don't have that enthusiasm. 
I don't know about you, but I'm excited to say, let's go to the house of God. I don't know what God's going to do. I don't know what God's going to do. But I'm excited to be in this house where He can do it. Amen? Amen. Amen. Today, Jim, God says to tell you, Satan's power is broken. He says, your faith has made you whole. How many times in the scripture did he tell somebody that? It's your faith that's going to release the power and the potential right, of God. He says, it's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by my spirit, saith the Lord. Amen? Amen. Listen, the ropes, the bondage, the oppression, the heaviness, the discouragement is going to be burned up by the fire of God. You know what the fire of God represents? The presence of God. Yes. Without, the Bible says with God all things are possible. Without him we do nothing. Listen, if I don't have the anointing, I don't have the presence of the power of God on this word, it's just word. But it's when that anointing comes on. We were talking about in our men's meeting this morning. They're talking about having AI ministries. Can you imagine having some robot up here? <laughs> How are you going to know a robot? Yeah. Amen? Amen. Listen. Somebody said that this morning, hellfire is being unleashed like never before. So how is the church to respond? With fire. Amen? Amen. Amen. If someone were running this house right now and holler fire, the whole atmosphere would change, wouldn't it? Okay. Amen. Somebody would run to get a fire stand or somebody would run out the doors or whatever. I know it's a little graphic. But I want to tell you about a fire that you don't want to run from. That you won't be looking for no fire extinguisher. Amen. That's the fire of the Holy Ghost. Amen. John said, the one who's coming after me. Amen. The one who's coming after me is mightier than I. When he has come, he will baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. Amen. And what we're seeing today, church, is a power confrontation. The power of hell versus the power of God. Amen. Amen. The church of the Lord Jesus Christ has got to catch fire, church. Amen. Amen. There's an unholy, satanic, demonic fire that's being unleashed on the earth today. Yes. And the sleepy, sloppy, passive, half-hearted, slumbering, half-baked church and church members aren't qualified to deal with it. Amen. It's going to take a Holy Ghost fire baptized church that can pray heaven down and cast hell out. Amen. Amen. on fire. The devil sending his fire out against the church. In other words, the snakes are coming out of the wood pile. Amen? Amen. Amen. I'm telling you, the church of wet blankets won't put it out. Yeah. You've heard the old saying, you've got to fight fire with fire. Well, that's true. That's nothing less than the fire of God will put out the fires of hell. Amen? Amen. Amen. You say, well, Pastor, you're laying it on pretty thick. That's truly yeah, not that's that right. bad. Well, you must be like Rick Van Winkle. You've been asleep for 20 years. You just okay. missed out on all of it. It's that bad, church. Okay. Amen. Amen. And any pastor and any church leader that does not sound the fire alarm to his sheep or to anyone who will listen is failing on their calling from God. Yeah, it's time for us, church, to wake up and realize we are his mouth. We're his hand, we're his feet, we're his body. It's time to get up and start telling people the truth. Amen. Amen. When witches are banding together and calling for this country to join and cast its spells and hexes and curses against the Supreme Court, we have a problem. And it's not just a disagreement with political parties, church. It's a spiritual warfare. Yes, it is. Yes, sir. The snakes are coming out of the wood piles. And listen, the most important thing a ministry can do today is to equip the saints to fight. Amen. I believe in prosperity, but prosperity is not the most important thing right now. Right. Now, me, now I lay me down to sleep, prayers ain't going to work. Come on. Okay? Right. If the church would have prayed those kind of wimpy, sleepy prayers for Peter, he would have died. But the church got on a deep spiritual warfare. Woo! They began to shake heaven. And a hell-breaking, unceasing prayer of God sent an angel. And he delivered Peter from the same fate that James suffered. Yes. In fact, James died because the church was asleep. Come on. It's time for the church to wake up. Yes. There's no time for the church to rest on the wall. This is a time for the church to get on fire. Yes. You know, if you get one person on fire, that fire is going to spread. All it takes is a spark. 
And before long, you got a whole forest fire. I want to see a church on fire. I want to see a city on fire. I want to see a country on fire. Amen. Amen. Listen. And when I talk about this church, I don't speak about the Holy Ghost and think about, oh, it would be so neat to speak in tongues. I'm talking about qualifying you and equipping you and empowering you with the power of the Holy Ghost and fire that we can become who God says we can be. Amen? Yes. The Bible says our God is a consuming fire. Right. He says he's going to baptize us with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Why does he baptize with the Holy Ghost and fire? Or who does he baptize? He baptized those who have been born again, church. Amen. He said, oh, I'll get my life cleaned up. I'll get saved. You get saved, and God will send the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit will help you clean your life up. Amen. Amen. Fire has always been a symbol of God's presence among his people. He said, God led the children of Israel through the wilderness by a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. God appeared to Moses in a flame of fire out of a burning bush. Ezekiel 24, 17 says the sight of the glory of the Lord was devouring fire on top of Mount Sinai in the sight of the people. When Elijah left this earth, he left in a chariot of fire and horses of fire, church. Right. Fire has always been an identifying characteristic of the people of God. Leviticus 6, 13 says the fire shall ever be burning upon the altar and it shall never go out. Fire is heaven's witness that we are God's property. Fire is heaven's witness. I said that God is in our midst. Amen. Fire is a purifier. Fire illuminates. Fire brings hidden things to light. Fire empowers. You know what the devil's trying to do? He's trying to put your fire out. Amen. He's trying to put your light out. You know why? Because he works in darkness. And he doesn't want to be exposed. When you begin to let that fire shine, when you begin to let that light shine, you expose him for who and what he is. Amen. 1 Kings 18, verses 36-39 As Elijah met the false prophets of Baal on Mount Carmel, there was a great confrontation between religion and relationship, between a form of godliness and the power of godliness, between the works of men and the power of God. <coughs> Such was the confrontation that there was going to be only one deciding factor. He said that God that answered by fire, let him be God. And when Elijah had finished rebuilding the altar, he prepared the sacrifice. He set the wood in order, and he poured water on the offering. And after he'd done all that he could do, he knew he couldn't change the people's heart, but he knew that God had to re reply by fire. And he prayed, and fire fell. He said the fire of God fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice, the wood and the stones and the dust, and licked up the water that was in the trench. Listen, fire is, our, is a heaven's answer to our prayers. It's heaven's solution for our weaknesses, church. Amen? Amen. Amen. Second Chronicles 7 1 says, Now when Solomon made an end of praying, the fire came down from heaven, consumed the burnt offering and sacrifices, and the glory of the Lord filled the house. Church, I want that kind of prayer. Don't you want Amen. that kind of prayer? Then we got through prayer that the glory of God filled the house. Amen. Amen. I said this while ago, fire is contagious. All as long as there's material, the fire is going to burn. Amen. That's right. Proverbs 26, 20 said, where there's no wood is, the fire goeth out. But wherever God sees hungry hearts, church, the fire is going to burn. The fir Listen, the fire of God will burn out everything that's not like God. The fire of God will burn out drug addiction. It'll burn out anger. It'll burn out lust. It'll burn out fear. It'll burn out unforgiveness. It'll burn out hate, prejudice, and pride. Amen. And listen, there are too many people who want to know God just as a blessing. But God is not just a blesser, church. He's a possessor. God wants to possess us. He wants to fill us. He wants to flow through us. He wants to make us a channel of his power. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Amen. When the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost came on the day of Pentecost, he came as a rushing mighty wind and tongues of fire. fire. Hmm. Why? Because God knew the church without power was no match for the devil. He knew that hell's fire was burning against the church, and the only thing that's going to put it out was fire from heaven. But listen, the fire of God is not a mental concept or an idea. The fire of God is a manifested power of God invading the earth around 
consuming our mind, consuming your soul, consuming your body, and setting it on fire for the kingdom of God. Amen? Amen. You need to leave this place on fire today. Anybody who gets next to you or close to you, they ought to feel the heat of the Holy Ghost. Amen? Amen. Amen. Especially the devil. Okay. Amen. Amen. Let me ask you a question. Does hell feel the heat coming from your prayer closet? That's good. Does hell feel the flames of your prayers? Well, I got quiet here on that. <laughs> Listen, I'm here to encourage. I'm just trying yes. to encourage you. They'll We've got so best. much potential that we they haven't even tapped into. Yeah. Oh, one of these days, if God wants me to have it, I'll get it. No, God says, I've already given you everything that brings the life and God in it. And through these precious promises that I've given you, you can be a partaker of his very nature. God wants us to be whole. He wants us to be healed. He wants to be successful, church. But it's a process. Like I said a while ago, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Make is a process. That means as you apply, it changes your life. It changes your thinking. It changes your thinking. It changes your choices. When you change your choices, you learn not let your emotions control you, but you let the Spirit control you. Amen. 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 Listen, remember these altars are all the way over. Anytime you need to come, you can come. Amen. Amen. I need some people that will come to them altars. They're tired of watching the devil run ram ramshot over this nation, over our children, stealing the innocence of little kindergartens. Yes. Murdered to unborn by the millions, twisted minds until they don't even believe that they have the right body part. Believe that God put them in the wrong body. People worshiping Satan. And there's only one hope for this nation, church. It's not a black hope. It's not a white hope. It's not the hope of the Oval Office. It's not the man in, in, as president. It's a man sitting on the throne of heaven. King of kings, Lord of lords. He has invested in the church with his power, and he's made us responsible for bringing his will to the earth. He said, church got to pray for his kingdom to come and his will to be done on earth as it is in heaven. He said, the church is to bind and lose. He said, the church is to cast out devils. He said, the church is going to lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. He said, the church has got to do the asking and he'll send the fire. Amen? Right, come on, lift your hands right now. And say, God, I'm asking you to send the fire. Send the Holy Ghost and the fire. Amen? Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Listen, tell God, I'm tired of being sick and tired. Amen? I'm tired of, being sick and tired. I'm tired of the devil stealing and killing and destroying everything that's good. Amen? amen. amen. Tell God you're ready to fight with fire with fire. Come on, amen? amen. When, when they, they came through the three Hebrew children in the fiery furnace, he had them bound. The fire didn't burn them. It burnt the bondage. That's right. It set them free, church. Amen? Amen. That's the fire of God. That's the presence of God. I don't know about you, but I'm hungry. I'm Amen. tired of just reading the word yes. and singing some songs and laying hands on a few people. I want to see the manifest glory of God. I want to see the power and the presence of God. I want to see this truck like I said before. I want to get the place where you don't have to lay hands on nobody. You don't have to prophesy yes. nobody. The Spirit of God just yes. feels us and saturates you. Amen. 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 Come on, give God some praise. Yeah. I said this morning, if you can believe it, whatever you're fearful of, God says, I'm going to burn that out of your life. Amen. Anxiety, worry, stress, Depression. he says it's going to be burned up. Gone. Sickness, he says it's going to be burned up. Frustration, confusion, it's going to be burned up. Get and lack. He says it's going to be burned up. Amen. Marriage problems, it's going to be burned up. Anger, bitterness, unforgiveness, criticism, it's going to be burned up, church. Grief and disappointment, it's going to be burned up. Amen. Mental oppression, it's going to be burned up. Dead religious mindsets or traditions are going to be burned up. Everything that's been holding you back, holding you down, depressing you. Today, God said it's going to be burned up if you can believe me today. Amen. Because you're going to be loose. Do I have anyone going to believe God today? 
Amen. 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 He said, did we not bring throw three men down the fire? But I see four, four. up loose walking yes. around in the midst of the fire, and a fourth is lighting unto the Son of God. I want you to notice, he loosed them and set them free while they were in the fire, church. Amen. Oh, one of these days when I get no, let yeah. God be God right now in your yeah. life. No matter yeah. what you're going through, He's yeah. bigger than the problem. Yeah. He's bigger than the circumstances. Yeah. He's bigger than the situation. Amen. Yeah. I'm talking to somebody Ooh. today. Yeah. Somebody, your praise is going to be loose. Yeah. You're going to begin to praise God like you've yeah. never praised God before. Yeah. Well, but you don't know what I'm going through. Then you're the one that needs to be praising God. Yeah. Praise open prison. Praise open prison. God wants to begin to praise and not wait when everything's going good. He wants you to say, I love you, God. I trust you, God. I'm going to praise you for what is going to happen. Even Job said, God says, the thing I fear to come upon me, but he said, though he's slain me, I'm going to trust him. Are you going to trust God? Oh, hell, pray for you to When things are not going right, when people are coming against you, when people are talking about you, are you still going to praise God? Amen. Yeah. 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 Some of you have been bound by sickness and disease. God says, believe me today, and that sickness is going to be gone. He said, by Jesus' strap, we were healed. It's already settled. It's already passed in. All we got to do is believe it and receive it. Bring it out of the spiritual realm into the natural realm. Amen. Some of you have been bound by finances. God said, it's time for those things to go. It's time for you to be set free from those bondages. Amen. Amen. I have anybody here who needs to be set free from some financial bondage. We don't have to do the praise God. Right? Yeah. Some of you feel weak, you feel anemic, you feel like you just can't go on, you can't deal with another day. Well, God says today, if you'll believe in your strength, is going to be loose. Yes. You're going to regain that strength. You're going to regain that joy. He said, the joy of the Lord is our strength. I said, we've lost the joy. Well, I'm going to go to church. i got to get up and go to church. We do it out of duty. No, I want to come run to the house of God. I want to see what God's going to do. I want to see how God's going to move. I want to see how God's going to speak to me. I got questions. I got things. I got family. I got children. I got the same problems you got. I need to hear from God. Amen. So when I come to the house of God, I want to be excited about the things of God. Oh, come on, y'all. He said, my word is spirit and my life. He said, the medicine. Some of us need the medicine today. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Church, I know, I know, I don't know about you, but I know I've been anointed and I've been appointed to declare liberty. Amen. 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 For, the, for the Spirit of the Lord is there's liberty. Amen. Amen. And whom the Son sets free is free Amen. indeed. Amen. Amen. You say, oh, well, it's been so long. How can, how long? It's not been going through this for so long. How is it ever going to change? Listen, it don't matter how long it's been. It could be just a few minutes like the three Hebrew boys, or it could be 12 years like a woman with the issue of blood, or it could be 38 years like a man at the pool of Bethesda. It doesn't matter how long or how strong. When the fire and the presence of God touches it, it will burn up. Amen? Thank you, Lord. Lord, I call a fire on the anointing of God that's anointing to destroy Joseph and remove burdens. And I call that fire, I call that anointing, and I call that presence into our lives right now. And I thank you for burning up everything that's been holding us back, that's been oppressing us, that's been enslaving us, that's been restricting us, that's been binding us. Amen, Lord. I thank you right now for your power and for your presence. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. This is my anointing to destroy a yoke. You know how to destroy a, a yoke, a natural yoke? By applying pressure constantly. Yes, that's right. You keep applying that word. You keep allowing the Spirit of God to manifest. You keep allowing that anointing of God. And you watch that joke, that thing that's kept you bound, that thing that's kept you connected to the wrong kind of people. God says, I'm destroying that out of your life right now. Amen. Galatians 5 wants to stand fast, therefore, in the liberty where with Christ has made us free and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Listen, he says, Stand in the liberty. Some of them, we got free, and then we let the devil take us right back into bondage. He said, don't be entangled again with that yoke of bondage. Right, 
Our faith has to be in what God says and not what the devil says. Amen. First John 5, 4 says, what, For whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world, and this is a victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Yes. No matter what the devil throws at you, the world throws at you, your faith is greater than those things. Amen. Do you believe that this morning? Yes, I Amen. So this morning, church, I'm decreeing in Jesus' name. Be free. Be free in your mind. Be free in your emotions. Be free in your body. Be free in your marriage. Be free in your money. Be free in your ministry. In Jesus' name, it's time for this church to get unbound and get free. Amen. God has called you and I to a life of liberty. Not only has he called you to a liberty, but he's called you to set the captives free. Oh, here's where the rubber meets the road. <laughs> you cannot liberate others unless you are liberated yourself. I say this all the time. It's hard to pull somebody else out of the mud when you're stuck in the mud yourself. Amen? God has called you and called me and anointed us to be a deliverer. Every one of us are called and anointed by God to be a Moses to somebody. Yes, thank you, Lord. Because a man named Moses, some one to three million people were delivered and liberated from a life of slavery and bondage. And Jesus came to set the captive free, to undo the heavy burdens, to loose the bonds of wicked, and to break every yoke. Acts 10 38 says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all. Say healing all. Healing all. That were oppressed of the devil, and God was with him. Church, you and I are anointed with the Holy Ghost yes, and with power. Hey. And we're supposed hey. to go around and heal all that are oppressed of the, not oppressed of God, oppressed of the devil. Yep. The devil yes. is your oppressor. Yes. Amen? Amen. Jesus said in Luke 10, 19, Behold, I give you, point to somebody say, talking to you. Talking to you. I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. God says, I've already given you the power. Why are we running from the devil? The devil should be running from us. Amen. 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 When you get up in the morning, your feet hit the floor, the, the devil ought to say, Oh my God, that's just Here she comes. Amen. Oh, yeah. You still be good. No, I'm saying good morning, Holy Ghost. No, rejoice. This is the day the Lord has made. I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. 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 I'm almost through. John 17, 18 says, Thou had thy father and sent me into the world, even so I have sent them into the world. John 14, 12 says, The works that I do, ye shall do also, and greater works than these shall you do, because I go to my father. He said, hey, so How can you do greater works than Jesus? Because when Jesus walked this earth, they could only be at one place at one time. Yes, sir. But we have Jesus in this yes. world. So that means we can be in many places at many times doing many works. Yes. Amen. 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 Oh, I just don't know. Well, I know. I know. I know somebody that knows. I know somebody that knows. I've seen it time and time again. Mark 16 Amen. says, In my name shall they. He's talking to who? Believers. Believe. In my name. They shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. If they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. He said these signs should follow the believers, church. Not just when you come to church. At home, on the workplace, wherever yes. you need to be. Yes. This is what should be yes. happening to us. Amen? Amen. We should yes. be casting out devils. We should be laying hands on yes. the sick, and they shall recover. Amen? Amen. He says, if you can take up a serpent, he's not talking about some of these churches that, that take rattlesnakes and dance and play with rattlesnakes. He's talking about like when Paul reached into the wood pile and the snake lashed himself on, he just shook it off. Everybody expected him to die. He just shook it off into the fire. That's what he's talking about. You and I have that kind of power. Yes, we have that kind of authority. Yes. It's time for the church to wake up and realize that. Amen. Oh, I just want to get to heaven. You know, when I first got saved, that's all I knew. I was waiting getting up a little back to church. That's all I knew. One of these days, I'm going to meet a white-haired man over on the throne, kind of like Kenneth. I'm going to meet a white-haired you know, white man on the throne one day, and I was going to stand before him. That's all I knew. I didn't know that this is what the Bible said, that we have power, that we have authority, that we can do yes. the things that Jesus yes. did. Amen? Yes. I didn't know I had authority over the devil. I didn't know I had authority over 
Me. Come on. So, you know what? The devil's not your biggest enemy. That's this right. is your biggest enemy. Yeah. 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 Amen. Thank you, Lord. This is a very specific group of people. They're called believers. Not apostles or prophets or pastors or teachers or evangelists, but believers. Yes. Every single person who's called upon the name of the Lord and received him as their personal Savior, they belong to that group. If you're a child of God, you belong to that group. You are a believer. Now listen, somebody is still in slavery now. You're in bondage, you're in captivity, you're under the oppression of the devil, and you can't seem to get free. Somebody, you need a Moses this morning. Receive it. Somebody in your family may need a Moses. Yes. Somebody yes. on your job may need yes. Somebody in Walmart. Somebody at the gas station. Somebody maybe at the hair salon. All around you, people are in captivity and they're waiting for a Moses, Moses to come and to bring them out. Yes. You can be that Moses to that people. Yes. Amen. Yes. Thank you, <laughs> you say, well, but Jesus is the deliverer. He's the one who sets the captives free. But Jesus is in us. Well, if God wants it done, he'll do it. God says, I'm using you. I say it's you. You're my body. He's the head. You're my body. It's not going to get done unless the body gets up and does it. Come on. As long as we sit on our seats and do nothing and don't do nothing, it's not going to get accomplished. Amen? Oh, come on. Give God some praise. God has called us to be a deliverer. He's liberated you so that you can be a liberator. He's brought you out of the bondage so you can tell somebody else, you know what? I was worried you were one day, but Jesus came into yes. my life. Yes. And the Holy Ghost and the power of the Holy Ghost totally turned my life around. And I'm not the same person I used to be. And I'm no longer in that bondage. And God says I'm no respect the person. And what he did for me, he'll do for you. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God has healed you so you can Lord. be a healer. God has restored you so you can be restored. Yes. God has rescued us, church, so we can be a rescue. Amen. How many, I'm going to ask the question, how many are ready today to be God's hand, to be his feet? Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Even more. Now listen, God sees that. God hears that, so get ready. Because God's going to use you. Yes. He's going to send somebody yes. across your path. He's going to send somebody in your house. He's going to send somebody on your workplace. You, but you're going to, God's going to begin to use Thank you. Get ready to be used. Amen. Amen. You, Amen. Amen. you don't make battles to God, not people. Come on. That's Amen. right. Amen. How many this morning are ready to be a Moses to your family? Amen. To be a Moses to your friends. People, there are friends out there that are dying and they're going to go to hell if we don't stand up and do something. Come on. Oh, but you know, my pride won't let me. What are they going to say? What are they going to think about? You know what? When I got saved, when I was. In the world, I was running around drunk and on drugs. I didn't care what people thought. Thank about. you. Sometimes even Kenneth didn't want to hang out with me. I really didn't care. We get we get to come to church and all of a sudden we're so worried about what people are going to say, what people are going to think. Who cares? You know what? I rather people laugh and make fun of me here. And they did that when I when I got saved. I worked construction. And people would call me Pentecostal Petty or Preacher Petty or, you know, they always had, but you know, when they got in trouble, do you know who they called? Yeah. 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 Same fact, here. Listen, I don't care what people think or what people say. Yeah. Yes. If this going to yeah. keep somebody from going to hell, go. that's what's important. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Don't matter about my yeah. that's right. One day that person's going to come up to you in heaven and say, thank you know what? You. I thank God you didn't let your pride. And he's sharing the truth. That's and now right. I'm in heaven because you were willing to, to, to put your yeah. pride down and be more concerned about my soul's salvation. Amen. 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 Yeah. Amen. Amen. Listen, as you present yourself to God today, to be his hands and his feet, to be his voice, he's going to loose you. You know, God can't use you if you're still bound. God wants to free you up. Freedom. You need to free you from bondage in your life. So you have a testimony. You know, I can go to somebody and start witnessing to them, start telling them all the scriptures I know, and that usually don't help them. But when I tell them, you know what? I was in bondage one day. I had a stronghold in my life. I had this issue in my life. But you know what? God changed it. God turned it around. God set me free. That's what people need to hear, Charlie. Amen. 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 Amen.
God wants to heal you. He wants to restore you so you can do what he calls you to do, what he's anointed you to do. Do you believe that today? Yes, I do. Yes. Listen, the Bible says now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Put your faith in action and watch what God does. Amen. Mark 9, 23 says, Jesus said, If thou can believe, all things are possible to him that believe. Can you believe? Can you leave here that blank of believing that God Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, powerful enough to take you to heaven when you die, is powerful enough to change your life, to set you free? Do you believe that you can have it today? Amen? Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, I thank you this morning for your word. I thank you, Father God, that you said that we'll know the truth, and the truth will make us free. And I thank you this morning, Lord God. I thank you, Father God, for your presence. I thank you for the Holy Ghost and fire, Father God. I thank you that nothing the devil can put on us is as powerful as what you can put in us, Father God. And Lord, today, I thank you, Father. As we release the Holy Spirit, we release the power and the authority you've given us, Father God. And we break every shackle, every bondage, every chain, everything that's holding us back, every issue that we have, Father God. We thank you today, Lord God, that Jesus' blood was shed for us to set us totally, completely free. And Father, by faith, we receive it today. And Lord God, we're not going to be the same as we were when we walked in here. Because we've heard your truth, and we're going to allow that truth to make us free in every area of our life so that we can be a Moses to somebody else. And I thank you for it this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Come on, give God some praise. I'm going to play a song. I want you to listen to the words of this song, and I'm hoping it helps your heart. Altars are open, and, uh, and we all will have an altar call here in just a moment. We'll also have prayer. Go ahead, Justin. I don't know about you, but I preach myself happy. Oh, yeah. 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 I'm ready. It's like, look out, devil, we'll get out there. Yeah. Yeah. Listen to the words of this song. Yeah. 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 